I woke up the other day and all of my GitHub Actions builds were failing. How did we get here? Since there are so many people now sponsoring me for early access to Kamalrebi for Mac, I wanted to set up a GitHub Actions workflow that would automatically build all the binaries on every commit so that people could get started without having to compile from source. I went ahead and I added that workflow and I set it to run against GitHub's macOS runners and I thought that was it. I thought we were good. So I woke up, I logged into my computer, and I saw that all of my GitHub actions across my entire account were failing because either a payment was required or some limits on my account needed to be increased. After doing a little bit of digging, I found out that GitHub applies a 10x minutes multiplier, whatever the hell that is, to any workflow that runs on one of their macOS runners. You can see from this graph that building Como Rebi for Mac on GitHub's macOS runners used more minutes in one day than the rest of my GitHub account combined did in a whole month. This is obviously insane, and there is no way that I'm paying Microsoft a 10x multiplier just to be able to write runs on macOS latest in a YAML file. I have a Mac Mini, which doubles as a nice power-efficient home lab server, so I decided to try and set this up as my very own self-hosted GitHub Actions Runner. GitHub suggests copy-pasting a bunch of curl commands into your terminal, but since I'm running Nix Darwin on my Mac Mini, it was pretty easy for me to declaratively set up a GitHub Actions Runner in my Nix Megaflake. If you're going to be self-hosting a GitHub Actions runner, it's important to keep in mind that the hosted runners that you might be migrating from have a bunch of useful utilities like RustUp and JQ already available. You're going to need to make sure that all of the packages used by your workflows are available on your self-hosted runner. The GitHub runner service in Nix Darwin actually makes this really easy because it exposes an extra packages configuration option. And you can just give this a list of Nix packages that you want to be available on the path for any of your workflow jobs. One of the really nice things about setting up a self-hosted runner like this is if you are building Nix flakes in your workflows, you can benefit greatly from the system-wide caching in the Nix store. It will bring your build times down significantly, especially for smaller change sets like Dependabot PRs. Hopefully, now that you've seen this video, you won't get caught out by this like I was. If you end up using Nix Darwin to configure your own self-hosted GitHub Actions runner, let me know in the comments how that worked out for you. I hope that whatever you will do today, you have a great, great day, free Palestine, and I'll see you all back here next time.